We've all heard the story of George Washington cutting down the cherry tree. It turns out it was not based on historical fact, but on the imagination of biographer Parson Weems. Now we learn of a discovery made by missionary Hendon Harris Jr. years ago. It's challenging the axiom that Columbus discovered America. And DNA analysis is proving Harris correct. Charlotte Harris Reese is the editor of her father's manuscript, published in book form as the Asiatic Fathers of America. Charlotte, thanks for visiting with us today. It's great to be with you, Steve. I got the copy of your dad's book that I read for this interview by way of an interlibrary loan that ultimately came from a location in Virginia. The front page reads, A Gift to Liberty University. And guess what? It's autographed by you. How's that for a small world? Yeah, it sure is. Your dad, Hendon Harris Jr., was a Baptist missionary to Taiwan before the Communist Revolution in mainland China. How did he happen to find himself in a Korean bookstore one day in August 1972, and what did he buy there? money, so he would buy Asian antiques, and then when he took trips back to the United States, would sell them to raise money for the mission. The proprietor of the store said, would you like to look at a map? And he said, well, sure. And then he said that when he saw what the map said, he became so weak that he had to sit down. Wow, what a startling discovery, Charlotte. How about if we go directly to the question that's probably on the minds of most people listening? When did the Chinese originally come to America? In the year 2000, the Chinese government completed an extensive study to see how far back their dynasties went, and they put it back to 2070 B.C., so I rounded up to 2000 B.C. Your father built his case for an early Chinese discovery of America by linking his newly acquired maps to an ancient history book familiar to Asian scholars. Give us some background on the Shanghai Jing. Shan means mountain, Hai means seas, and Jing means classic. It described different areas of the world that they reportedly mapped at ancient times. Getting back to the maps themselves, what are some of the geographical features of Fusang, or America, that the maps accurately describe? On the map, there is Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon, they describe very large trees. And I found out during one of my lectures, someone came up to me and said, that's actually a sequoia tree on the side of the map, and it was called the Fusong tree. So we have believed that Fusong is America. There are other things on there, like Reaching Skies Mountain is right where Mount McKinley or now Denali would be. Wow. When your dad first compiled his information, DNA testing was not an established procedure. Since then, scientists have used the technique to discover what about the ancestry of certain Native American tribes. DNA now has actually linked exact families, Chinese and Native American families, to pre-Columbian dates. One of these studies was done, they had studied uh, Eva Longoria, who's of Native American ancestry, and her family had been in the area of Texas since before the white men came to the New World. Right, and uh, for anybody who doesn't know, she's a movie star. Right, she's a movie star. On a later episode, they did the ancestry of Yo-Yo Ma. Now, Yo-Yo Ma's parents were reportedly the first generation of his family out of China. They had written records back to around 1200 of the whole family in China. So it had to be some time before then. But then when they did the DNA studies, quite by accident, they said, well, you two are related. <laughs> wow. But they're not the only ones. They can look at the DNA and tell that the Native Americans had to have come from Asia. Charlotte, what linguistic evidence supports your father's conclusion? There are many different words that are used in some of the Native American languages that are actually Chinese, like in Old Western. What did the Indian say to the cowboy when he came to him? Remember he said, how? Mm -hmm. I went to the Smithsonian, the Native American Museum, and I said, is that Hollywood or is that real? And they said, well, we think it's Hollywood. Well, I did the research a little bit further, and I found that, sure enough, how is a greeting in Lakota. Well, in Chinese, when you say hello, you say, ni <laughs> You know, it's, it's how. We believe that not only just the Chinese, but probably Koreans and Japanese followed because we think that they came actually by sea. While we're at it, let's demolish one more established, and I'm using air quotes here, fact of history. Why is the theory that Asians emigrated across a land bridge on the Bering Straits no longer credible? Well, I don't want to say that 
no one ever came over the land bridge, but more and more scientists are moving away from that theory. But if you look at the 2011 Japanese tsunami and all the debris that was washed over to America since that time, see how easy it is to come by sea. And as my father wrote, men are, tend to be lazy, not just men, but you know, women too. That current that comes over from Japan and from Asia is actually about 62 miles wide. It's like a riptide, 62 miles wide and about half a mile deep. Once you're in it, it's extremely difficult to get out and it can bring you over. And they say you can fish the whole way across, you can catch rainwater. Uh, of course, the uh, other thing about Bering Strait, it's very bleak countryside, all snow, no vegetation. So it would have been very difficult for someone to spend months going across that route. And also by the theories of those people that they would have been blocked for 500 years from going further south because of the ice and snow. It's much easier to cross in a warm current. Charlotte, it's been fascinating reading your dad's book and talking with you. Thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. You're welcome. Charlotte Harris Reese is editor of The Asiatic Fathers of America, written by her dad, Hendon Harris Jr. It's available from Amazon.com and AsiaticFathers.com. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, WaitTillYouHearThis.com. And be sure to check out the Wait Till You Hear This podcast. (laughs) 